What would you say have been the key changes recently in the Hadoop ecosystem? Uh, there have been, s Hadoop is a very fast moving space. It's had a lot of changes in the last uh, 18 months or so. Specifically, where Hadoop used to be constrained to batch processing type workloads, today there's been a plethora of new systems that have shown up in the Hadoop ecosystem that allow a much larger variety of use cases to be analyzed. So we have interactive analytic systems such as Impala, we have stream processing systems like Spark Streaming and Storm, we have machine learning capabilities like MLlib and even uh, companies that have been outside of Hadoop for long, uh, previously and built their reputations outside of Hadoop have started incorporating Hadoop into their architectures. So you can see that with companies like SaaS as well which are doing things which are quite interesting in the way they leverage Hadoop. So really the set of technology choices that you have that can run on top of your Hadoop environment has really exploded. And so you have just a lot more types of problem domains that you can attack with the single copy of data that you put in your Hadoop system. I would say that's the biggest change. And uh, tangentially uh, related to that, there's also a lot more integration of your classic enterprise data applications with the Hadoop ecosystem. So where before Hadoop was the standalone system on the side, uh, today you can actually have Hadoop uh, be operated on with the standard tools that are used to in the enterprise, whether it's an ETL tool, whether it's a, a BI tool, or a machine learning or analytic tool. All of these things now work natively with Hadoop, and I think that's a pretty big shift that we've really seen only in the last 12 to 18 months, which has made it much more tractable to bring a larger variety of use cases, but also more production-oriented workloads onto Hadoop environments. Well, that's interesting. And so, what practical problems do these changes solve for business people and other non-technical people? Yeah, and one of the big challenges with Hadoop in the past has been that it was limited to a, a, a sm elite small set of people who could actually leverage these technologies effectively. And uh, that there's been a bit of a democratization effect with uh, some of these changes because now we're talking about taking your existing BI tool and pointing it at a Hadoop environment, which unlike your previous en environments, can encapsulate a tremendous amount of data about your enterprise, and you made that accessible to uh, much more business analyst friendly uh, tooling. So now you are hundreds of business analysts who know what they want to find or may have some idea of what they're looking for, actually have access to the data in a way that they can leverage without having a deep technical skill set. Uh, one of the things our founder, Mike Olson, said in a recent conference, which I think is very apt, uh, is that Hadoop is disappearing to some extent, where before it was this elite tool that was used by the few to solve a certain class of problems. Now anybody could be leveraging Hadoop and it could be transparent to them. They barely know Hadoop's there. It's not completely true yet, but we're getting to the point where Hadoop is invisible to the large mass of users who are actually in accessing their entire corporate data sets without having to think about where it's stored or how it's processed. That sort of happens for them through their tooling and they don't have to be aware of it which to me is like really awesome because as a product manager myself, I leverage data on a day-to-day -day basis in my job and I only have a limited amount of time to do so. So being able to point a Tableau or another uh, tool like that against my data sets, which we do internally, we use our own systems internally, is just magical. I can do lots more analysis much faster. I can ask interesting questions about the ways my customers are interacting with our software and then make choices based on that. And I don't have to be a data scientist or uh, some kind of computer programmer in order to do that. I happen to be one, but you don't need me to be one in order to do this. That, to me, is the really exciting part about the changes that have happened recently. And of course, uh, the wide variety of use cases means that there are problem domains that you would never think to attack at this scale, which are now being solved all the time. You know, Dealing with um, in improving your optimization yields for machine learning models by running a larger data set, it can be pretty dramatic in terms of impact. You're talking about a small change in improvement of your algorithm quality can result in millions of dollars of savings for, say, credit risk, as an example of something that people do to do today with our systems. And so having large data, data sets does give you access to a lot more power than you had before, which, which is great. And so taking a look at trends, mm -hmm. are you sensing a growing interest in real-time applications? You know, that's uh, interesting that you asked me that because this entire conference, uh, I've been hammered by many, many people asking me about how they can leverage real-time applications on top of Hadoop. Uh, and this is frankly fairly new. I mean, two years ago, nobody was doing real-time applications on Hadoop. Uh, things have changed quite a bit. Uh, and when we talk about real-time, we had to be a little bit careful about the choice of words there because to some people who are more fanatical about these things, 
you can't really call it real time when we're dealing with time scales of potentially seconds, but uh, we're coming from a world where batch processing were taking hours and now we're moving down to the few seconds to potentially mi micros milliseconds. We're not really doing high frequency trading here. Let me be very clear nice. about that. <laughs> <laughs> we are not likely to be the cause of your stock market crash, but uh, in the context of uh, Hadoop, we're talking about like of hundreds of milliseconds to a few seconds. There's lots of really interesting applications with large data sets that you can do in that, in that time window. Uh, for example, one, one of my favorite examples in our customer base is a hospital chain, which is trying to detect uh, sepsis. Sepsis is apparently a medical condition that kills a lot of people in hospitals. I had no idea what it was before I found out about this use case, and now I'm really excited to know that we can do something about it. Uh, the basic idea uh, here is that all these hospital beds generate tons of data about uh, patient conditions such as heart rates, blood pressure, or temperature, and lots of readings are being captured at all times in your hospital bed. And um, they, they have a Hadoop system that's actually analyzing this data as it co comes through, and can spit out a recommendation saying, hey, this patient seems likely to go into septic shock soon. So it'll send out an alert to a nurse holding an iPad application, uh, which will just say, hey, please check in on this patient because they seem to be going into shock. This is literally something that's being used in a hospital chain today. Wow. This is a very huge change from where Hadoop was before. We're talking about a mission critical. It does not get more mission critical than this application running uh, on Hadoop, which is doing a streaming analytic application. So very exciting stuff is happening. Having said that, um, I think people are still learning how to use streaming applications in the Hadoop context. So uh, I would say the market is still uh, relatively young. Uh, there's lots more to be done here. There's lots more people doing explorations of various sorts. But the technology is there, as this use case clearly proves. You can do really sophisticated stuff and do so in a production uh, environment effectively. So that's pretty exciting stuff. So I think uh, hopefully uh, we'll see more and more of this happen over the next few months. We've already got a lot of uh, customers using it successfully, but lots more asking us questions, asking how do I use this effectively. So I expect really a huge in, uh, uptake in the amount of uh, real-time analytic use cases that people are doing on Hadoop. It's pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, as a minor detail, we have probably 30% of our customer base, or 20 to 30% of our customer base roughly, who's got some kind of uh, real-time analytic application uh, in various forms of uh, usage right now in their environments, in their Hadoop environments. So that's, given that it was zero about two years ago, that's a pretty big change already. <laughs> so. Right, that's interesting. <laughs> and so what about cloud computing? What, do you, what kinds of trends are you seeing there? Uh, uh, so, an interesting story about Clutter, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Clutter was originally formed with the name Cloud in it because the expectation was that we would be a cloud-based company. Uh, we changed our mind uh, in 2009 because apparently the cloud business was not quite there yet. <laughs> so, uh, we just we have the name which is right for the time now <laughs> because uh, the cloud has been seeing a huge amount of uptake in recent years. Uh, and we're talking about not just young companies which start off in the cloud, but also tr mature traditional enterprises which are running on the cloud. Uh, two of our more well-known customers include a large financial regulatory, regulatory agency called FINRA, um, and they're running uh, on AWS with Cloudera as their uh, Hadoop platform. And another one which you're likely to be familiar with is the CIA. Uh, they are, and as you can expect, uh, companies like, this, folks like the CIA have very stringent requirements in terms of uh, security and other considerations when they run anywhere. And the fact that they've been able to choose and effectively use a cloud environment shows that the cloud has matured a lot uh, relative to the traditional fears people have always had about those kinds of uh, environments. And we're seeing more and more of that happening. I would say that in the traditional enterprise, it's still a young market. Uh, there's a lot more to be uh, done there in, in the sense that there's not a lot of people who have adopted it uh, fully. Having said that, we're seeing a lot more interest, a lot more POCs right now. I would say we're still probably about 18 to 24 months away from widespread adop adoption, but the market trend is very clear at this point. Um, this is a subject near and dear to my heart because I'm personally um, looking to uh, the ways in which we adopt Hadoop to be more effective in a cloud environment where the data center architecture is a bit different. And we've done a lot of work in that space recently. So we're quite excited about our investments in the cloud. Uh, we think that's something that's going to be a big future push. It's not something that I would say is quite there yet in terms of enterprise adoption. Obviously, in the uh, smaller companies or newer companies, they do tend to use the cloud quite heavily. But we're seeing even in the traditional enterprises, there's been a significant move towards the cloud. So 
all signs are very bullish towards uh, cloud adoption. So. And so to close our conversation, I wanted to open up a broad question. What um, trends, projects, and technologies are you following? What, what's the next big thing going to be? You know, that changes so often, it's hard to track anymore. <laughs> but uh, um, right now, the things that have been, uh, I think saying this is going to be pointless because everybody's heard of it too many times at this point. Spark has been one that has uh, galvanized a lot of uh, attention. And it's been very successful in a variety of use cases, uh, whether that's machine learning or whether that's ETL. It has capabilities that are unique to it. And it's, we've successfully deployed it in very, very large uh, customer accounts with very large data sets. Uh, that's been one which has certainly got a lot of attention, but beyond recently, Kafka's emerged as a similar type of exciting new tool that promises a certain level of data ingest uh, rates which were not imagined before. Uh, companies have been using Kafka for several years now, but it's been limited to a certain uh, class of companies. Now Kafka is starting to see uh, much more widespread adoption. Um, so in our own space, uh, we have a uh, we developed an internal project called Impala. Uh, Impala has uh, re uh, clearly rekindled an interest in uh, traditional MPP database style architectures because now you see a plethora of these tools emerging across um, uh, the ecosystem. There's many such options out there. We think Impala is still the most effective uh, such solution, but clearly having the ability to do uh, MPP style database processing on Hadoop is a major, major trend that's not going to go away anytime soon, and we feel very comfortable with our bets there at least. Well, it's very interesting. Thank you very much for talking with me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.